Let's talk about this idea of doing drills, drills to get yeah. good at stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you think if you got to get good at something, you have to do a lot of drills. You got to, you know, let's say you want to be good at punching. Well, you got to do a drill on, on footwork. You got to drill on different angles of the punch. Each angle is a drill. And drill, drill, drill. Lots of drills. Yeah, that's right? one way to do it, yeah. Versus another way where you have like two drills that covers all aspects to get you good at it. Is yeah. that how it works or is it, well, it, or is it two different school of thought? <clears throat> well, oh, I'm assuming you're talking about martial arts, so let's talk yeah. about... Um, it's a weird... Wing Chun. Right. Yeah. Some people guys forgot a lot of Wing Chun uh, practitioners, instructors, fans on our website. So let's take trapping. Okay, so in the West, thanks to the great Bruce Lee, and <clears throat> trapping in the 80s and 90s became pretty popular. So you got different traps, right? In parallel, you got a crossing gate, you got an inside gate, you got an outside gate. What if the guy holds center? What if the guy disengages? What if the guy go off center? So now you can easily, with variation, teach about 40 traps. And people get off on this. They like it, right? You can sell DVD after DVD kind of thing. I remember growing up in the 80s and 90s, <clears throat> this was really popular. Not so much nowadays, right? But when I talked to um, Grandmaster Wong Chung Loon, he was like, look, this is pointless. You don't need that. We infuse everything into Chi Sao. And that breaks out into Man Zhao drill or Zhang Zhao drills, right? right? But in Hong Kong, at least the way he was talking about it, they didn't use all these endless variation of drills. You ingrain everything into one container, one drill. And he certainly turned out better than most people I've ever seen. And then when I met Jesse, you met him. I mean, the guy's phenomenal, right? And I asked him about trapping drills, and he just laughed. He's like, yeah, well, no. Like, if you touch him, you're like, what trapping drills? He infused it, everything into one container. Right, yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you need 46, Well, you know? did he start with 40 drills, which led to one, like two or three? Or did he start with two or three and just ran with those? No, instead of one drill, Bruce taught him Chiso. Jisoo, the Tell him some reference point stuff. He didn't need it because, like, let's say if you got four points, right? Right. If you train the crap out of those four points, those four points can deal with on center, right? And you go, all right, that's kind of cool. Then you throw off center on there. Now that those four points can deal with off center, and then you go, oh, that's kind of neat. Then you go, oh, the guy disengages. Those four points will deal with disengagement. So you got disengagement, removals, direct attacks, rock, scissor, paper. None of them are better. But those are the only three human possibilities. So you start dealing with those stuff. You go, oh, that's kind of cool. But what you'll notice if you keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going, and very few people keep going, is in between the four points, your body fills in the gaps. That's why you don't need more drills. But it's organic. You treat it to the point where your body fills in the gaps. Or you can break all that down into 40 drills. But I guarantee you won't get as good because it's not organic. It's something infused from the outside. It's a great way to entertain students, but no. And so recently I got an interesting, uh, awesome questions on our website. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was talking about Chung Q folks out, block and hit at the same time. And I forgot how the question was phrased, but it basically is done with different energetics. You can do it from a point of view of a jet cell, where when you block, you create a suction, you, you suck the guy in. It can be done with like a mud energy where you're piercing through like a jump cell. Like this is a jump cell, right? right. So you can do the chunky folks out with a jump cell energy or with a jet cell energy and suck the guy in, right? And the guy's like, oh, well, how do you do this or that? You can create different drills out of that. Like, okay, we're going to do this block, but with a suction energy. We're going to do this block with a piercing energy. We're going to do this block with a shocking energy. Yeah, you can create different drills. But if you had trained your basics right, the jump cell, the jet cell, and so forth, when you do this, it will come out organically. Your body will know exactly when to do what. Like if you threw a ball at me and went into the air and I'm catching the ball, my brain goes, catch the ball. Sometimes my hands is like this. Sometimes my hands like this. Sometimes my hands like this. How many, how many ways can my hands form when I'm catching the ball? What do you think? No, many ways. Hundreds? Sometimes one hand to bring it to the other hand. Like yeah. this. They'd be given a number. I throw a ball in the air, I can throw it like this, I can throw it like this. How many ways can you hand formulate exact shapes? Uh, let's say 500? 500, 500, 600. Okay, let's say 500, right? Yeah. yeah are you going to make a separate drill of each? No. Or do you somehow organically let your body fill in the gap and you 
naturally do all that 500 things. That's a better way, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But throwing a ball is very simple. Now, how can you take that paradigm, put it in martial art, where someone has the genius to design a method or a drill that allows your body to intuitively, naturally, organically fill in the gaps so you don't need 500 drills in a case of trapping 40 drills. So that's what you know, the great Wang Shun Long and the great Jesse Glover was talking about and all the Wing Chun ancestors that got any good. You don't need a lot of drills if you have one drill container that naturally infuses all the gaps. But if you don't have a good teacher or a good system, usually system, it's not the system's fault, but you don't have enough practice time or maybe you don't have an experienced teacher, now you've got all these holes and you start to discover, man, i got a hole here. I need a, I got a hole here. Now you've got to plug them with different drills. In right. some cases, they have to go outside for a different style. But I'm saying that's usually not necessary if there's enough attributes. So your body, like I said, with catching the ball, it naturally fill in the gaps with one, enough repetition and practice time. And two, if the container, the drill itself was well designed, that allow a freedom of expression within the drill. So before you could do these limited, not limited, but fewer drills yeah. to handle all these different variations. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you need a container, so you still need to do your basics, mm -hmm. right? So That's if the drill. You, That's if the you, container itself, yeah. So in the... In the you know, when you talk about Wing Chun, for example, right? Yeah. You were saying about the jump cell with the energy of, energy of a, uh, wait, what'd you say? Uh, well, a jump cell is kind of like a piercing energy. Piercing, it right. It can also be done with the, the mud splatting energy, right. right? And then you get jet cells like a suction energy, right? Right. When you do that chunky folks out, you can do it of all three energies. But you have to know all the three separately before yeah. you could do it in yeah. one, right? Right. So you do need that initial work. Yeah, just not as many drills. from a Wing Chun point of view. But you don't need all these different drills that do all these different variations. No, oh, once your once your basics are intact, your body fills in the gap. Uh, I got it. Okay, yeah. it's kind of like um, okay, you do Chi Sao, you got Tan Sao, you got Bong Sao, you got Fok Sao, right? If those were ingrained properly when you're rolling, no matter if the guy disengaged, try to trap, counter trap, uh, direct attack, or removal, eventually your body will fill in the gap with just that rolling. I got it. Okay. So it's kind of, it just fills in the gap. Instead of trying to memorize all these different techniques, right? And you got to be careful about that because once your body fills in the gap, you can flow and do endless variation. So that, now people try to copy you and then they, they will start trying to practice all these things. But it's very difficult to get good at all these different things. It's better to get good at one thing that naturally filters out. So right. that's, that's why you don't need a lot of drills. It's the same with... Uh, like in post training, right? Let me talk about Qigong. You got different, like say if you do medical Qigong, there's all sorts of ways you can work with up and down, forward and backward, left and right, in the back, all the way down. There's so many, you can learn up to like, easily you can learn up to 70 movements in a Qigong set, right? But post training only has one thing, one container. You don't learn 70 different things. You learn one thing. But within that one thing, it has plunging in it opening the pores, bone breathing, elongating the spine, stretching the spine. Did I say bone breathing already? Yeah. I think so. Working with the feel, all three of them, and working with outside in the feel, working with rooting in the ground. All of this stuff is working on in one thing. But all these things, each of them, you can do 10 different techniques. And now you have 50 techniques. So if you grab somebody and you infuse those five things within one container, does she have a better chance to get deeper skill or the person you took those five things and made up 50 different exercises as the Qigong said? Historically speaking, the greatest master was the latter. Mm -hmm. Not opinion, but statistically, the greatest masters was an example of that. And is it because, um, because either you don't know or you don't think that your body will intuitively fill in the blanks? No, most of the time it's entertainment though, right? Uh, like somebody's learning like posting, right? You go, okay, work on this. And then they look over at their, somebody else and they're learning one method, two methods. And then they Keep got in their, yeah. 50 different techniques. And now automatically that's a wow, that guy's got 50 techniques. I only got one. This is boring. I'm going to go over there. So that happens a lot. Uh, Same thing with um, that Sing Gong, the sitting stuff. You look at Zen, right? Well, what do you, they, got, they got one hand position. They're sitting in a cross-legged position. And then... Whoosh, and then you got other, I won't mention a name because I got too much respect for them, but other sitting system might have 70 different techniques. They'll brag about 200 techniques, right? And here's Zen over here, Zen Buddhism, very close to Jomong in Taoism, 
they come from the same line anyways, right? Just get one post, maybe one one hand position. So a lot of guys would get bored. They're like, ah, this again? I've been doing it for a couple of years. But yet, if they only study the inside what's in that one thing, it could cover the same thing. Like this sitting might have 100 techniques. Zen has one technique. But in that Zen sitting, it might have the 100 variables already in there, if not more. Cool. So you don't have to rip it out and make external um, external exercises. Yeah, yeah okay. kind of like in Bhagavad, the eight palm changes later on become 64. But that 64 is contained in the eight, according to most so you can extract it out for easier learning, but if you look at history, eventually it's not easier learning. It gets too complicated, people don't get as good, but they get more entertained. But if you look at the originals, always everything ingrained into one container. That statistically the greatest master was that school of thought. Uh, I see. And I always pay attention to this when I was a boy. Like, okay, I don't care what people say, I care about what I who, who are the best guys? That's all I care about. I look at the best guys and go, what's the paradigm they're operating under and why? I'm too stupid to know, so let's bug them. So I'll ask them and ask them and ask them and ask them. And they, eventually I'm like, man, you guys kind of operate in the same paradigm. Like when I met Grandmaster Wong Chung, I was like, hey, do you do a lot of trapping drills? And he just laughed and goes, no. Or when I met uh, Professor Jerome in post training, I go, hey, do you do all 200 postures from Taoism? And he goes, no, I do one. I go, well, you can't work on the upper gate with just one. That's why we have the high one. You can't work on the lower gate with this one. That's why we have the low one. You, you can't work on expanding sideways with this one. That's why Taoism has a sideways one. And Sifu laughs and goes, you can. Oh, really? Are you saying that if I'm like this, I can't work on the higher one? If I'm like this, I can't work? Really? So you think it's external now? It's your hand's doing it. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I go, oh, uh let me rephrase my question. So uh, your hands help you? He goes, yeah, if you're not that good, yes. And that got me thinking, right? So it doesn't matter if I was doing Qigong, it doesn't matter if I was practicing sitting, it doesn't matter if I was doing martial art. It's like, no, you don't want to infuse in one thing. I don't need 200 friends on Facebook. I need two good friends. But in, in the context of martial one. arts, though, um, the masters are yeah. able to practice less things. Mm -hmm. But the beginner, don't they need to be at least aware of the 40 drills before they compress everything into four, for example? But drills are not the same as methods, though. If you say mm. you, you have a lot of drills, sure, but you have a lot of methods, no. Mm. One method ingrained a lot of stuff into it. Look at boxing, it has five punches. But any good boxer can punch from any angle with neither hand. And they will walk through most martial art guys. Whereas most martial art guys that get the black belt, they need about, what, 200 ways to punch? And here's that box with five punches. And then they go, oh, well, I can beat him because he only has five ways to punch. I got 200. But the heck come you're on the floor and he's not when you fight? That guy has five punches, but he can punch from all 16 angles with his left and all 16 angles with his right. That's 32 angles of attack. Off five punches, he figured that out because his body fills in the gaps. He didn't, his coach didn't break it down and go, all right, man, in boxing, we've got 64 ways to attack, 30, no, 32 ways of attack, 16 angles of each hand. No boxers say that. Right. They go, here's five punches. Spar, work on it. You start figuring how to fill in the gaps by getting punched in the head and punching other people in the head. And by going slow and by going medium speed, then going full speed and dial it back down. This loop allow your body, okay, tie your hand, tie your hand behind your back, do three rounds of one hand, and then vice versa. Or... For, um, Joe Frazier used to do that. So, mm. so all these different games you play in sparring, now you, you can, your body fills it up. With that five punches, you figure out how to attack 32 angles. So it sounds like you're saying that... That's organic though, right? Yeah, organic is definitely yeah. the way to go, but the rest of the stuff is just purely entertainment? Ooh, I don't want to insult anybody, but I, I'm just going to say, hey, man. If you or or learn, would you say like just a different way of learning? It's a different way of learning. Okay. I guess that's okay. the right way to frame it. Right. So, yeah, I don't want to come off as I'm, I got full respect for everyone's way. If it works for you, that's great. But right. I'm saying if you experiment with a few things, then you're limited. If you experience experiment with a few things, but leave room to let your body and your mind to fill in all the gaps, you have a lot of stuff, off a few things. Or you try to extract everything and fill the table with a lot of stuff. And I don't think that's, it's better to organically let your body have a lot of stuff 
by feeling it, like catching the ball. Instead of trying to memorize 500 ways to form your hands. Gotcha. So, that makes sense. So rather it's sitting or it's the martial art, I think it's the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. Um, we're very flattered since this podcast came out in the last few Kung Fu reports. Chris has been telling me there's a lot of requests and emails about how can you learn this. And I've already said in the last few episodes and also in my articles and ebooks that you, I recommended quite a few teachers. But you're still asking, you know, and I feel flattered you're asking if you can train this with me. So we are going to be doing a workshop, retreat, seminar, whatever you want to call it. We don't know when and where yet. We're going to be planning it. So go to the description of this video. And Chris will put a link below on um, where you can look at our live events and you can go in there and give us your feedback. Basically, we try to get more feedback of where people want this to happen, when to happen, and we might be able to make it happen. Yeah. All right. If okay. anything, you could also just go to the website and there's right yeah. on the homepage. It's a button there. And chankungfu.com. And then you can put a description below. Yeah. All right, guys. See you next time. See you next time. Have guys. a good night. 